mean, I have reviewed grants myself from people who are reasonably eminent and uh, and should be should on the whole be funded, but they have written grants which are bad, do not explain their ideas, and just simply seem to be on the assumption that they're going to be funded. Um, and you can't really give those good reviews um, because they're just not really explaining what they're doing. I think you've got to be able to communicate well your ideas um, because one of the problems is that um, scientists are often criticised for not being able to communicate their ideas to the general public and in many ways we can also be criticised not being able to communicate our ideas to each other very well and the grant process actually really does sort out how you communicate your science to somebody who's a non-specialist so if I got to review something say completely off ball so it was some technique that I knew, but it had to be on plants. You know, uh, that you know, you'd have to write write in a start. The person who's writing the grant would have to write in a style to communicate why that science is really important. Techniques, yeah, fine, but why is that bit of doing it really important? And uh, and having just done that for a grant recently, it's actually really difficult because you you're really enthusiastic about this stuff. You really want to know why this works, and you want the people and the money to do it, right? Um, but uh, <clears throat> you've got to sort of take a step back and sort of, you know, s explain with great enthusiasm to, um, if you like, the interested 14 year old <laughs> why this is interesting. And I think that's really got you know, you've got to aim that first paragraph, I think, at the intelligent and interested 14 year old child, school child, uh, and that they communicate that sort of enthusiasm to them. <laughs> Can I ask you something? Yeah. Have you got what the first paragraph you wrote for that grant was? Uh, yeah. Read me your uh, your first your first that all important first paragraph. <laughs> okay. Then. Right. With the development of modern instrumentation. Uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. With the development of modern instrumentation, analytical ossification is becoming increasingly recognised an important technique for the characterization of biomolecules and biomolecular interactions of importance in both academia and industry. The National Centre for Macromolecular Hydrodynamics, that's us, has some of the best analytical ossification facilities available worldwide and collaborates extensively across the academic and industrial world. This proposal is for the installation, commissioning and maintenance of sensitive fluorescence optics for one of the Beckman XLA and a little of centrifuges located in the MCMH. This will extend the capabilities of the AU technique, which will not only benefit groups at Nottingham, but other academic and industrial users of the AUC at the MCMH. So that's where it, basically where we pitched it, that we had um, technique and expertise. In fact, we have some of the best facilities, as I say, worldwide to do this. Um, and witness, well, sorry, some of the best facilities worldwide to do this. Um, and by just a little bit more money, we can make this absolutely world class and provide it for UK industry and for UK academia, which of course is what the research councils are interested in. It's actually the funding for uh, UK academia and also our links with industry. 